Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from our last public business meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Item number one, we're uh, honored to have our Allegheny County Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Pressman. Uh, Yeah, go. Okay. <clears throat> well, good evening. It is my pleasure to be here this evening among individuals who exemplify leadership and move Allegheny County forward. I am incredibly proud to represent the excellent educators of the Allegheny County Public School System. At this time, I'd like to take just a moment to reflect a little bit on education as a practice. Teachers make up the backbone of our community. We help to mold the minds, attitudes, and actions of every child we encounter. And this is no small task. You see, teachers don't dream of giving more assessments or attending more meetings. We aren't in the business of policies, procedures, or pressure. We are in the business of people. And some of those people happen to be little, but they have big ideas. Many of them will pursue careers that don't even exist yet. Teachers feel successful when we see others chasing their dreams and tackling feats that we never thought possible. I'd like to tell you about a little guy I taught about a decade ago. He stuck in my mind. And by little, I mean he was only about three feet tall, pretty short for his age anyways. And one day his mom packed him a fruit by the foot in his lunchbox. And he unrolled it as far as he could. If you're not familiar, it's a piece of like a fruit roll up, but it's about two feet long. He unrolled it as far as he could until he reached the limit of his little wingspan and he just couldn't get it any farther. He was stuck and he didn't know what to do. And he was really disappointed that about six inches of his fruit by the foot was still rolled up. So he problem solved the best way he knew how. He stuck his foot out into the center and pushed out the rest of his snack. He was so persistent and so proud, I didn't even have the heart to tell him he couldn't eat it. <laughs> What I learned from that day was that persistence and ingenuity have some very sweet rewards. So tonight, I'd like to issue a challenge to everyone here. That challenge is to find a young person and learn something from them. Let that young person teach you something. Learn a big lesson from somebody smaller than yourself, and then you will understand the pride that comes from being an educator. Thank you. Did you bring some, some folks with you? Yeah, I brought my husband and my uh, stepson Daniel and my daughter Gracie. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, come on up. Still can to this day remember 
uh, I have to give a big shout out that she's passed since it's Mrs. Kelly that taught at Bell. It was, made a very, very uh, big impact on me. So thank you for adding that in. I can remember the day when Mrs. Flintstone would ride the dinosaur into the cave. <laughs> 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 I remember two, Sheriff Robertson. I didn't think Commissioner Brody graduated. I wasn't sure. I did. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Bill had the uh, George, George Washington's on him. <laughs> Bill only had to get through eight grades before he graduated. <laughs> did he graduate? Did you roll? No. Okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Um, over the course of the past several months, we've talked. Uh, on this podium about an, an epidemic that we've dealt with here in Allegheny County, which of course is the uh, opioid and heroin problem in the county. Not just the county, but you know, the state and also uh, the country itself. Last year we did a uh, town hall meeting and probably, probably reached out to about 2,000, I'd say 2,500 people within the county by trying to educate not just the kids, but trying to educate the parents and the teachers and the uh, citizens of Allegheny County with this particular problem. Two individuals who were instrumental in this uh, process were, are here tonight and I would like to of course recognize them for, for their work. Uh, Rebecca Myers who is the program director with Outpatient uh, Addictions and Chris Delaney who is the program director prevention and uh, promotion with the Allegheny County Health Department. Both of these individuals were at, I believe, every uh, every talk that we gave, and they went all the way from Westerport to <coughs> Frostburg to Cumberland uh, to Flintstone, Old Town. We, we tried to cover as much of Allegheny County as we could, and uh, there is plans in the work to continue the effort We'll be providing probably town hall meetings coming up. In fact, I just located another uh, another movie, which I haven't had a chance to explain or, or show the two ladies yet, uh, that I think would be another good thing to bring out to the community. So we're going to try to do that. We're going to try to expand our um, our talks to just, from just the high school kids. We're going to try to take that to our middle schools, uh, actually even to uh, maybe some of the elementary schools this year with some other uh, uh, videos that we found which are suitable for, for different ages. So uh, I feel that personally the opioid and the heroin problem, the way to address it right now is with education to try to keep individuals from getting involved. So with that being said, I have two plaques. Come on up, ladies. <laughs> You need a wall to put them on. It says the Allegheny County Sheriff's Office Certificate of Appreciation awarded to, and I have one for Christine Delaney and one for Rebecca Myers. They say in recognition of your valued support in 2016 town hall meetings and for your dedicated service and efforts where they most counted with the addiction problem in Allegheny County. And uh, we had on here May of 2016. Uh, we were going to try to get these a little earlier. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. But I'd like to present Chris. This is yours. And go back to that tour. Appreciate all you've done and uh, put me down the values. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
be the Allegheny County Commissioners wish to publicly recognize the professional and personal contributions of Ms. Meyer and Ms. Delaney to the Sheriff's Town Hall meetings. And the Sheriff's Town Hall meetings were organized to inform and educate citizens and stakeholders about non-medical use of opioids in our community. And whereas abuse of and addiction to opioids is an escalating consequence of abuse and addiction that are devastating, and now there's an opioid epidemic in many countries around the world. We, therefore, the Allegheny County Commissioners, admire and appreciate the work of Ms. Myers and Ms. Delaney to the Public Health Services in Allegheny County. And that's signed Jake Shade, Creek Brody, and Will Thank you very much. And I think we owe the sheriff just a big round of applause. And feel great. Thank you.
This fiscal year 2017 budget continues to show our commitment to Allegheny County taxpayers. The increase in spending is limited to only 1.9%, and this year's budget offers a sm another small decrease to a real property tax rate, which brings it to the lowest level since 1991. Last year, this board took action that will greatly expand the Homestead Property Tax Credit, and this will go into effect July 1. The number of households eligible to claim this credit will more than double compared to last year. And Allegheny County will now have the most generous tax credit in all of Western Maryland and the fifth <coughs> most generous in the state. Fiscal year 2017, the total general fund appropriations are $86,262,478. And education remains the county's single highest funding <coughs> priority with 46.3% of the general fund dedicated to the Allegheny County Board of Ed and our community college, ACM. Allegheny County government has increased funding of the Board of Education by $332,140 over last year, bringing the local contribution to $30,169,685. This is a record contribution and does not include the additional $4 million needed to make Allegheny High a reality. Also, as of today, the county is providing $13.7 million of funding for the new Allegheny High School to assist the Board of Education's effort to obtain the most favorable state funding commitment, the county repaid uh, $1,079,342 to the state as part of the county's commitment to this project. And the county will also be providing in-kind contributions, including services of a construction inspector and the constructions of our athletic fields, which will be done in-house by our uh, Department of Public Works. Public safety receives 20.5% of every tax dollar. Public safety includes Allegheny County Department of Emergency Services, Sheriff's Office and Road Patrol, Detention Center, and our volunteer and EMS companies. We also voted to contribute additional funds to bring Allegheny County Sheriff's deputies into the Law Enforcement Officers Pension System, or LEOPS, and our police will now receive the same retirement benefits that other officers across the state deserve. The budget includes $792,500 for PAYGO projects, which will be used for capital projects for the Board of Ed, library, detention center, county office complex, and roads without incurring any new debt. The budget only utilizes 150,000 previously assigned fund balance for new voting machines required but not funded by the state. The county's fund balance is maintained at a level slightly exceeding that prescribed by the Government Accounting Standards Board Statement number 54. The budget provides a 1% increase to Allegheny College of Maryland, Allegheny County Library System, HRDC, and the Family Crisis Resource Center, which have been steadfast partners during our challenging and fiscal times in the past few years. The local impact grant provided to the Allegheny County from Rocky Gap Casino funds continues to be a bright spot. In addition to the 560000 reserved for Opportunity Scholarships, 10% of the funds are reserved for PAYGO for the county, and 10% for the Board of Education. Another 15000 will be set aside for the Western Maryland Food Bank, and it's estimated the local fire and EMS companies will share over $700,000 from this source of revenue. A highlight in this budget is our income tax receipts, which increased 9% over last year. And this is the biggest one-year increase in recent history, and underscores the fact that every job, no matter what the pay, adds increased revenues. And while there's still much work to do, this increase shows that there's positive economic momentum in Allegheny County. Our board has achieved our self-initiated goal of $3 million as the county's maximum annual debt service commitment. Given the loss of highway user funds and the state shifting additional liabilities to local governments, Allegheny County had no choice but to reduce its annual commitment to debt service, which previously stood at $5 million annually just five years ago. All departments aggressively and consistently pursue and secure federal, state, and private grants which help offset costs to taxpayers. Furthermore, all management team members and department heads operate well within their authorized budgets. We're proud of the budget we've crafted and will continue the hard work to be good stewards of our tax dollars. And the entire budget is, is available on the website. This is signed by Board of County Commissioners Bill Valentine, Creed Brody, and Jake Shady. Thank you. And with that, we'll uh, go into the budget itself. Good evening, Commissioners. So, how are you? Good, how are you? 
Well, as Commissioner Shade uh, just said, you know, we've been working on the budget since January. Uh, tonight would be the night we formalize the budget and go ahead and adopt our operating and capital budgets. And there's a number of steps we'll have to go through to do that tonight. Um, largely a formality at this point, but, but a necessary one. So if you don't mind, we'll just kind of step right through everything real quick. Um, the first motion we have is to enact resolution 16-15, which will actually adopt the fiscal year 17 operating and capital budget. Um, it's in the grand total amount of $135,663,070. Uh, so, and that includes, as Commissioner Shade mentioned, an $86 million general fund. Um, it, it includes a 2% cost of living adjustment for county employees. <coughs> A total increase of 1.99 percent over last year. Um, let's see anything else here. Tenth of a penny reduction in our property tax rate and the homestead tax credits moving to four percent. So all in all, a nice budget. As Commissioner State Shade mentioned, uh, a little easier than past years. Still not great, but but definitely a little easier, a little better. So first step tonight would be for you three to uh, approve Resolution 16-50. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Item number five, our uh, tax levy and differential. So, so that was step one. Step two would be to actually adopt uh, the tax levy and tax differential rates for the year. And as we discussed during our constant yield hearing uh, back in March, and we've discussed many times since, uh, we reduced the tax rate by a tenth of a penny to 0 0.9770, six consecutive year of tax decreases. Uh, no one else can say that in the state, so something to hang your hat on. Um, so what we need to do with, with this motion is, is adopt those tax rates so we can apply into the tax bills effective July 1. So we'll go for your approval on tax rates. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And number six, our supplemental levy. And this would be our supplemental levy for special taxing areas and ad form rates. Um, they are very largely unchanged from prior years, and your approval of these will allow us to also apply these to the tax bills effective July 1. So, for the approval of these. Is there a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And last but not least, item number seven. And this one's probably the easiest stop, and it's just a motion to authorize. Um, our department to, to publish the necessary levy documents in the paper and, and as Commissioner Shade mentioned this will be on our website probably in about a week we'll, we'll finalize everything after tonight and should have the document out so this will allow us to publish everything. Um, make a motion. We accept item number seven. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank for a good budget process. And it's a lot longer than, than the five minutes you, you stand up there. It goes a little bit. That's right. Yeah. So I'm yeah. glad to be here tonight. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. Item number eight is our water and sewer rates for 2017. Mr. Yoder. Hello, Commissioners. On uh, May the 4th, the Sanitary Commission met and recommend uh, approves the recommendations to the county commissioners for um, water and sewer rates. They were presented to the county commissioners on May the 5th and have been posted on the website since then. Uh, the, the increase was uh, what we consider to be a bare minimum. That's a $2 per quarter sewer and a $1 to $2 per quarter on water. To my knowledge, we haven't received any comments about well, what posted on the website. Uh, just looking for your uh, official approval on those rates tonight. Mark, when the Sanitary Commission recommends us, they have representatives from each area that, that, that we have customers in, correct? That's yes, that's how we try to pick them to cover the entire, cause the entire county. Last year when we did this, you know, the next day everyone asked why we set and raised the rates. I said, we only adopted the rates that they gave us by their representatives. So I just want to be clear on that. So. Is that a motion? That is a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, 
Item number nine is our Evans Creek Stream Restoration. Mr. Patterson. Dan, 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 Gentlemen, uh, tonight, this is a result of Dan and Angie's great relationship with Mel and DNR. They reached out to Dan. Uh, he came to me on a Friday afternoon and said, I just got a call from DNR. They had some unexpended money from fiscal year 16 that they'd like to throw our way towards a project that we have been working on for a couple of years trying to get some grant money. So tonight here, um, this is twofold. We'll be able to restore a section of stream on Evans Creek and also re, uh, realign a sewer that's been compromised by the stream. So uh, asking for your permission to sign into contract with DNR and to accept the funding and the conditions and also authorize us to move forward toward advertising the project for bids. So move. Second. <clears throat> On favor. Aye. Another deal. Well, that's a kind of switch. It's just conditions. I wonder what they are. All three of us have to resign. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Thank you. Yeah, the only one has to resign. That's, that's all you got. Um, moving into our consent agenda, Mr. Everly. Commissioners, if you will indulge me, and it's that time of year again in our consent agenda. So, this time of year, too, a little bit water. So tonight we have 10 items on the agenda for consideration. Item number 10 is a motion to request authorization to advertise the North Branch Road Rehab Project. This is a project, uh, commissioners, which the county was successful in receiving ARC funds uh, from just last year to the tune of about $700,000 to support this important project. Item number 11 is a motion to award a contract to Park Lane Construction and Development to build a new salt dome in the amount of $293,404. Commissioners, as you're aware, the county demolished our old facility uh, last year. Uh, after 25 years of service with the county, the building was used when we got it from State Highway Administration. So I want to thank uh, Paul and Adam for getting creative and, uh, and uh, using our coal hole road tax funds and our PAYGO funds to uh, finish this project. Item 12 is a motion to authorize the Department of Public Works to award the South Cumberland Library Renovation Project to Harbell Incorporated in the amount of $1,459,000. Commissioners, the uh, county share of this project is approximately $85,000. And these funds will come from our PAYGO fund. Item 13 is a motion to authorize staff to uh, begin the design and general project administration for the Water Station Run Sewer Rehab Project. This is a, an important project which we are doing in partnership with the Maryland Department of the Environment and the Allegheny County Health Department. Item 14 is a motion to approve Resolution 1616 to authorize a $100,000 loan with USDA to support the Route 36 waterline project. Item 15 is a motion to approve Resolution 1617 to authorize the standard pickup provision of employee contributions as part of the county's enrollment into the state's LEOPS program. We're hoping, commissioners, that this is the last little nuance that we will have to step through to uh, uh, perfect uh, our enrollment of our public safety employees into LEOPS. Item 16 is a motion to declare surplus real property located on Amherst Avenue and to authorize its sale. Item 17 is a motion to authorize the administrator to execute the annual senior care plan submitted by the Allegheny County Health Department to the Maryland Office on Aging. <clears throat> item 18 is a motion to approve the purchase of a one-ton truck from Hertridge Ford on the state bid. Uh, we will be uh, securing this vehicle <coughs> commissioners as part of some grant funds associated with the Rawlings Water Project. And uh, item number 19 is a motion to authorize $1,000 from the county's community promotions account to support the Old Town Summer Festival scheduled for later this month. Commissioner. Is there any discussion? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Erwin. Uh, Mr. Rudd. Great. Just briefly, commissioners, if you will indulge me, um, our deadline for program open space submittals by uh, 
all our partnering agency throughout the county it was uh, uh, May the 1st. And, uh, we have uh, received a list of 13 projects from eight organizations. And at this time, I'd like to just uh, give this summary document to you for your consideration and uh, your guidance in terms of how you'd like for us to move forward at this time. Now, the long and short of the commissioners is, is that of the 13 projects, they totaled $429,701 program requests. Unfortunately, we only have $175,899 to play with. Nothing new with the PLS fund. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Valentine. Uh, just a few things, uh, real quick. At our last meeting, uh, Commissioner Brody brought up a, a project that he felt uh, Tri County Council killed last year. Well, it was, uh, it, was actually, it was actually our ARC, yeah. and what has happened, ARC has changed their guidelines for uh, things that they will fund, and it's seen as an access road now to get funding for access road, you need to have a written program explaining exactly how many jobs it's going to create and all, so uh, that, that's a federal program we've got very little to say about. Uh, secondly, I'd like to personally thank uh, Paul Cale and his team. Uh, I think it was a great meeting up in Western Port uh, yesterday. That's a project that's uh, moving forward. Looks like that water line extension uh, through uh, three different phases will go all the way to Bloomington and in Garrett County. It's greatly needed up in that area and it'll actually be a good uh, financial boost for the town of Western Port. So it's a win-win all the way around. Pretty good. Well, I'm going to keep it short. Thanks, Jason. It, it, budget season's done for another seven months, six months. And I, I, I really don't know how to show uh, appreciation of, of the board on how much we do appreciate the hard work in this because it's not easy. We know that. But since we've got a lot of department heads here, thank every one of you for staying in budget because that makes it, our life a lot better. With that, uh, the only other little thing is, I don't know if I told you this last meeting, we did have a little meeting up in LaVeo with a project, and it's going to go forward. Thanks a lot to the, uh, thanks a lot to Administrator Everly. I have to give Dave credit. He sits here a lot, and I'll give him credit for a lot of stuff he does. But he picked that ball up and run, and the governor had his troops out in force. So with that, projects, two projects are a go now. That's it for me this evening, sir. All right. I've, I've spoken enough tonight. But, uh, you know, maybe next year we'll get uh, some uh, uh, local highway user funds like we were expecting, and then that budget will even be easier. Oh, my. Um, before I forget, because this is at the bottom, the federal government's revising their floodplain maps. Um, there's an open house scheduled for Tuesday, June 7th, at the Maldive Pur Purpose Building from uh, 5 to 7 at night. Uh, there will be a question and answer session um, at 6 o'clock, and MDE will be there too. So, create that. Maybe, maybe, maybe you would uh, oh. like to hang out with, with them. Um, and then, then there's one on Wednesday the 8th from 1 to 4, and that's at the George's Creek Library in Lenox County. So, that's uh, Tuesday, June 7th, and Wednesday, June 8th. And the really interesting thing about these floodplain maps are supposedly created using nothing but scientific data. And yet there's areas that they say were flooded within the last 100 years that now they're saying they haven't been flooded in the past 500 years. So it makes me wonder about their science. I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. I had enough of that fight two weeks ago. <clears throat> All righty. Um, our constituent comments tonight, we, we have uh, Kenneth Wilmot signed up. <clears throat> I'm Kenneth Wilmot, did it 534 times you come around. I'm here just to bring to your attention an incident that I observed and participated in on Old Town Road there at the Circle K gas station. I pulled in there Monday afternoon to get gas. I had to circle around the tank to get on the other side to fill up my truck. And I got out and was running my credit card. I heard a lot of jabbering. I thought, what, what's going on? So I walked around the other side, looked in this 
I'm not going to tell you what car or what the car was. I looked in this car, and here's a little two-year-old boy strapped in a car seat. So I said, wow. So I, I said hi to him. He's waving. He's jabbering away, and he's pointing into the you know, the service station, where the people went to get their snacks and pep, right? Anyway, so I, I stood there a good five minutes, and finally the mother came out, and I, I told her, I said, lady, I said, I've been watching your car here so nobody would run off with your child. Well, she wasn't thankful. I'm not going to tell you whatever, all she said, but I'm in the hang, but you know what? And in other words, she told me to mind my you-know-what business and all this other good stuff. And I said, well, if that's the way you feel about it, I said, I should have called the police. So she said, call the you-know-what police. So she let I call the police. I don't know what came of it, but I just want you to know that I know there's laws against leaving kids in, in the car, but I think they're only enforced when something happens. I think something should be done when people find a child in their car and they bring it to the attention. I don't know what you, you people can do about it, but the, we do have people, it's unbelievable. I wouldn't leave, I've got 12 great grandchildren, and I can guarantee you, my grandchildren, they better not leave anybody in the car by themselves. And I think it's terrible that we got people around here that just don't care about the children. She said, oh, I was watching. I said, lady, I could have run off that child. You'd have never seen. But I, I, I think maybe a start would be, I think every business should have to have a sign on the door, do not leave children in your car. It, uh, and then maybe a little thing here, charges for, I don't know, but, I think the only thing that gets people's attention today is you hit them in their pocket. It don't do any good to put them in jail. They gotta, gotta pay out a fine or something like that. Anyway, thanks for listening. I, I just wanted you to know, but this is a matter of record because I called the police. And uh, I don't know what to come of it, but I, I don't think she's happy if they did go see her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With that, our next public business meeting will be Thursday, June 30th at 5 o'clock. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you.